Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, episode number 223. Presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the Marshall Plan 65-Step Strategic Process. For those of you new to the show, I'm Nancy Marshall, your host, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. And with me today is a very dear friend and client, Gail Eau Claire, who's Senior Development Director for the Trek Across Maine which is something that's also near and dear to my heart. <laughs> so welcome to the PR Maven podcast, Gail. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's so nice to have you here. So Gail was born and raised in New Jersey as one of five children, and her parents would bring the family to Newport, Vermont every summer to visit their grandparents and rent a house on Lake Memphremagog. Gail was adamant that she was going to one day live in Vermont. And after graduating from Trinity College in Burlington, Vermont, with a Bachelor of Science degree, Gail started a family in St. Johnsbury and began her career in management. She then moved to Winooski, Vermont. That's Winooski. <laughs> we got some complicated names between Winooski and Memphremagog. <laughs> But I've been there, so I know. <laughs> so she moved to Winooski to work with the Vermont Children's Aid Society as a development assistant. After 33 years of calling Vermont her home, Gail moved to Augusta, Maine. Her love of development work brought her to the Sisters of Mercy in Portland and after four years to the American Lung Association in Augusta as a development manager. Now, after 15 years, Gail is now the Senior Development Manager for the Trek Across Maine, where she manages a six-member development team and a million-plus-dollar event. It's a big event, I know. It's got a lot of little moving parts, right? Totally. <laughs> a lot of moving parts. So Gail lives in Augusta, Maine, with her husband, David Eau Claire, and their dachshund, Molly. Molly's probably there with you somewhere, Gail, or did you lock her away? No, <laughs> I left her home today. <laughs> oh, oh, you're at the office now. I'm at the office. Gail is a longtime antiquer and enjoys decorating. Her house is ever-changing with treasures. And as David says, don't stand still too long. She may sell you. <laughs> they share a blended family of three sons and two grandchildren. Gail's old federal style home speaks to her and the fact that everyone is family in Maine never has her yearning to be anywhere else but home. That's nice. I like that, Gail. Yeah. So tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place, Gail. Well, um, after management and when I was in Vermont and after um, working in management, I was laid off. And so looking for a job, I applied to Vermont Children's Aid Society, was hired and um, worked with the development director there. And we did some fundraising events, et cetera. And um, I just loved it, just loved it. So, you know, when I came to Maine and I worked with the Sisters of Mercy, it was just the most fascinating job. <laughs> it really was. Um, and then I volunteered for the trek across Maine with David and his bike shop and I was fascinated by it. I had never been to a cycling event. And so um, when this became open, I applied for the job. 
because I had the best time as a volunteer meeting people. I met people from New Jersey, New York, like from everywhere. And I could not believe that everyone had this big smile on their face and it could be 95 degrees out and they're riding their bike on hot pavement. I Or pouring that. buckets of rain. Or pouring buckets of rain, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've ridden in the track seven times now and I've done it virtually twice. And um, of course, I you if you know me, you know I would prefer the in person. <laughs> and yeah, I just love riding along my bike and pulling up yeah. alongside people, talking to them, and then going to the rest stops and talking to all the volunteers. And it's such a social event. It is. It really is. Yeah. So, so it, it's a wonderful event. And uh, so you moved from New Jersey to Vermont and then to Maine. And of course, you're working for the American Lung Association, which is the overall, uh, I don't, you don't call it the sponsor of the track, it's the organizer or owns right. the track. So what ha role has the American Lung Association played in your decision to stay here in Maine? Um, I think it's really my passion for my job. And it is very much the people at the event, the volunteers, my staff, you know, there's just such a, a, a large group of people and the relationships. I mean, I've got this great team. Uh, we laugh a lot and we complain a lot, <laughs> but we laugh through it. And, uh, but it's, it's the people, you know, like every week, you know, or, or every month we have meetings with um, volunteers who are amazingly committed have done it for, like yourself, a number of years. Either they've ridden or they've volunteered or both. And it doesn't get much better. You know, the people on the ride, they're like, hey, Gail, like I haven't seen them in a year, haven't talked with them, haven't emailed. And it's like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, you know, and you catch up on old news. And it's like, you never, uh, you never finish that conversation. And it's just near and dear to my heart. I think the event touches my heart. Uh, even when I first started volunteering for David's uh, cycling um, participation or for his volunteer participation, what I really noticed on the trek and it truly touched me is that I feel personally, the trek is this tool that helps people meet other people. They solve a personal challenge, they might find a decision on where they're going to, or what type of um, journey they're going to go on. Uh, they make friends for life. And, but it's a, a healing tool. And I really believe that. I've just heard so many stories from trekkers, from, from mothers of trekkers, um, about how the trek has changed their son or daughter's life because maybe they read, they rode next to another trekker and they started talking and having this conversation. And maybe that was day one. And then maybe day two or day three, they bumped into each other again and they just continued the conversation. And when that child or young adult got home, they changed or they found they made a decision as to where they wanted to head in their journey. And the parent was totally moved. And I, I just, I can't tell you how much it moves me. Well, of course, all of this is to raise money for the yeah. Lung Association and for a great cause. It's for clean air and healthy lungs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me personally, my mom passed actually the week of the track in 2022, this, this past year of lung disease. And mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this, this is really important because she was sick with lung disease and we didn't even realize how bad it was. Um, yeah. She really had, I mean, she had been diagnosed, but it was kind of under the radar. And um, yeah, all of a sudden I was like, wow, yeah, this is a cause that I, I mm -hmm. really believe in. So. I think that's part of what brings everyone together mm -hmm. during the trek is is uh, is working for a cause, but having fun 
you know, raising significant amounts of money and, mm -hmm. and riding sig significant, significant miles. Do you want to talk about how long it is <laughs> in the route? So it's three days. It's on Father's Day weekend. And it's approximately 60 miles a day for a total of about 180 miles. And, um, you know, we try and stick to that number. But, you know, you're in Maine. And so sometimes you can't get there from here. <laughs> so, you know, the route might be a little bit shorter, but not much. Well, yeah, there's there have been days when it's been 70 miles, too. I remember when yes. it started at Sunday River and went to University of Maine at Farmington. I think that was 72 miles because I did that in the pouring rain one year. And I, I was counting every quarter mile on the way. Oh, yeah. You know, you try not to look at your watch and you try not to look at your odometer too much because it's really discouraging when it's not moving. I know. <laughs> but um, boy, it's such an accomplishment. And I, I think, again, that's one of the things that brings so much joy to everyone is the the incredible accomplishment. First of all, you know, the training in, in advance mm -hmm. and and fundraising in advance, because right. each trekker has to raise how much money? Five hundred and fifty dollars. Minimum. Minimum. And uh, if you're riding the virtual trek, it's 400. So, um, you know, you can ride it either way. Yeah. And then, of course, we've been working on, on sponsorships. We might as well announce the sponsors for oh my 2023 because uh, we've been working together on that. Do you want to name those off while we're at it? I don't know. I'm going to catch all of them. <laughs> but uh, VIP is our lead sponsor. VIP and, Tires and Service. Yep. Yep. And they're just wonderful to work with. They really are very enthusiastic and I think very passionate about our event. Um, we have Puritan and uh, let's see. Who Puritan else? Garmin. Medical Products. Garmin. Yep. Yeah. Garmin, who's been a uh, sponsor for, oh my goodness. I bet you 50 to 20, almost 20 years. Yeah. Uh, we have LL Bean, of course, and they have been a sponsor, I think, from the beginning. So 30 something years. Um, then we have the uh, Courtyard by Marriott is a new one. Courtyard by Marriott's our newest sponsor. Yes. And, and, and that was um, that was a connection that was made through Ginny, who works at Puritan Medical Products. So we were happy uh, for that introduction. Um, and thanks to Emma, who has put the list up in the chat here. So oh, we also have Hammond Lumber that yes. had been a sponsor and they, um, they had, returned. but they've returned. Yep. yep. And Martin's Point Physical Therapy, yep. uh, Central Maine Healthcare, Bank of America, Midcoast Parkview Health, Kennebec Savings Bank, Bangor Savings Bank, Spectrum Medical Group. Cross Insurance, Billado Insurance, Maine State Credit Union, Blueberry Broadcasting, WGME TV, Down East Magazine, Fielder's Choice Ice Cream, Vibe Media Production, Gorham Bike, Cycle Mania, Ski Rack, and Side Country, and um, the yeah, Rusty and Crank. We, yeah, Rusty Crank and Rainbow Cycle. And Ernie's Cycle Shop. And Ernie's Cycle. Yep. Yeah, so all of the sponsorships really make the event possible. Oh, totally. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've been talking about how complex of an event with, um, you know, you're you're moving 700, 800, 1,000 people mm -hmm. all, you know, from starting in Brunswick and then going over to Lewiston and to St. Joseph's College and back to Brunswick. So it's a, it's a moving... Party. Party, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's expensive and it's complicated it and there needs to be a lot of safety precautions and coordination right. and yeah, yeah, so it's really um it's really been well, I love working with you, Gal. So Thank you. um it's a lot of fun, but also it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But we make a good team. Yeah, we do. And <laughs> and we might as well say we are still looking for a few more yeah. sponsors. So, um, you know, people can reach out to me or you, you'll be getting Gail's contact information. Mm -hmm. um, and how do people sign up for the trek if they want to actually ride in it? They can go to trekacrossmaine.org, our website, 
and you can choose to ride either um, Father's Day weekend, lo you know, locally, or you can um, choose to do the virtual trek, or you can choose to volunteer. Right. So the virtual yeah. trek is you're riding on a stationary bike, or you're yeah. riding your own bike, but not on um, along the route. Right. In your community, or maybe it's the rail trail, and you know where you live. Um, you are. I mean, you could even be. Uh, at the YMCA and count, you know, a spin class as part of your mileage. Or, you know what, we're not going to check on you. So, I mean, maybe you only ride 100 miles. Yeah, okay. right. Okay. The other thing that I really like about the track is, you know, because I'm not the fastest rider. I mean, I can ride a long way, but I don't go that fast. But you yeah. don't have to. It's not a race. And no. nobody judges you either. So, um, you know, there are some people that are faster. And, yeah, they they kind of finish first every day. And then they're like, <laughs> they get to, you know, they're having their baked potato for lunch. That right. is one of the lunches is a baked potato bar, which is pretty amazing, by the way. <laughs> and you don't feel guilty eating a huge potato you loaded don't. with chili <laughs> and sour cream because you've just ridden 60 miles on your bike. But in any case, um, if even if you're slower, um, you know, I yeah. typically average 10 miles an hour and I just so I take six plus hours to, to complete it. And that's OK. Nobody's judging. Yeah. And, you know, if, and Nancy, I know you know this, <laughs> if you, if you, let's say are 15 miles in and you're like, you know, I'm kind of struggling or whatever, I need a little bit of help. You can wave a SAG driver down and they'll take you at least to the next rest stop. So then, you, you know, you can eat some more and get back on your bike and head back out. Yeah. So we're there to help you have, I mean, we want you to be successful and we're there to support you. In that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want people keeling over <laughs> at the bottom of a hill or and say, I just can't go up one more hill. Cause yeah, sometimes the, the hills like are pretty grueling. <laughs> they can be, but um, well, this is great. And uh, we're going to take a short break now and hear from our friends at Sprague and Curtis in Augusta. But we'll be back in just a moment with more from Gail Eau Claire. Sprague and Curtis is a locally owned real estate company. We're primarily focused in central Maine. Uh, I got excited about Nancy's book because she's so well known in the area for her marketing and branding techniques. And uh, we're always looking to expand and learn and grow. and. Um, so uh, a lot of us here at the office decided that we wanted to uh, read her book and learn some new techniques. It benefits Ray and Curtis to have a large brand and audience um, because there can often be uh, multiple years between transactions with clients. Um, so it's important to network them with them and, and stay in touch with them in those in-between periods. And this book really helped us uh, learn some techniques and methods to, to continue to do that. We organized a small book group with Nancy's book uh, with brokers in our office this winter to share information and remind ourselves how important it is to always be working on our network and continually reaching out to our customers. Platforms like social media are important in expanding your business, but equally as important are handwritten notes, cards, letters. She inspired me to send her a note of appreciation, just thanking her for the book and her insight. In reading Nancy's book, I was excited to look to continue to grow our brand and our audience. I think she does a great job of um, motivating us. Nancy's book really helped me learn a few things in marketing and branding and how important it is to stay on top of reaching out to clients periodically, staying top of mind, providing useful information, and, and really telling our story as a company. We're back for more after uh, <laughs> after hearing from our friends at Sprague and Curtis in Augusta. That was kind of a nice story that uh, they had that book group and and then uh, Lori Doobie reached out to me with a handwritten note. And of course, I love handwritten notes in the mail. I always have, so uh, that was great. So we got into this a little bit, Gail, as far as like the trek across Maine is so much fun. Um, in addition to, first of all, we're having a fun event in Portland in February. You want to talk about that? Sure. On Thursday, February 16th, we're going to be at the um, Marriott 
Hotel. The courtyard, courtyard by Marriott on commercial. Right. And uh, they're on Commercial Street. And so we are going to have a beer and bikes event there from 5.30 to 7.30. And we have not had, geez, a beer and bike event um, for probably four or five years. Because of the pandemic, right? Because of the pandemic. And we had um, we had done it for a long time. And we thought it would be great just to take a break. And so um, we're really excited to partner with them. And uh, so we just invite everyone to come, volunteers, uh, trekkers, sponsors, you know, bike shops, just come on down and, uh, you know, we will have some finger food. We're going to have awards and we're going to have door prizes and it's just really going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make a video there too. Yeah, we're making a video and um, going to be talking to lots of people. So it's very much a, a social event and we'll probably run um, a registration promotion. So if you would like to come down and, and register to ride or bring someone from your office um, to volunteer with you, that would be great. Um, you can never have uh, enough buddies. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, right? Yeah, and you always make new friends. <laughs> oh, totally. So how much money does the Trek raise and where does the money go to? Well, um, last year, the Trek raised about $800,000. Um, in the years past, pre-pandemic, um, we were at like somewhere between a million three. We've been as high as a million eight a couple years. Um, our goal is really to try and get to a million. But I think, uh, as everyone will attest to, that covid impacted all of us in various ways, not just personally, but in our businesses. And so um, we are really hoping to increase um, our, not just sponsorship, but our participants and um, family participation is just really key. As we said, it's on Father's Day weekend. And um, maybe we could talk a little bit more about how families can get involved, Nancy. Um, but the money uh, goes to research, education, and um, legislation. So 90 cents of every dollar goes to our mission, which is pretty amazing in the nonprofit world. Yeah, that's great. That's nice. So we do the PR for the track. And of course, we've generated a lot of really good PR over the years. Could you remember any of the highlights of uh, good PR coverage? Well, um, one of the things that I did like, I think all our staff really liked is connecting with trekkers and finding out like why they ride and asking them to um, do an interview with you or one of your staff on why, you know, why is the trek so um, important to them or why are they passionate about it and to get their life story. Um, and it could be as simple as their son or daughter decided to ride with them uh, in the past couple of years. Um, but it also is, uh, there are stories about, you know, they're riding in memory of someone that they used to ride with or someone is ill and they're riding. Um, so it's really sometimes to ride in honor of someone or in memory of someone. And it sticks with them, you know, um, throughout the years. And uh, it's, they're very touching stories. And uh, they themselves might have been uh, diagnosed with lung disease of some sort. They might have asthma or COPD or, you know, lung cancer. So you just don't know. But right. those are always wonderful stories to hear. Yeah. And last year we did an opinion column, or we did several different opinion columns, I think, for several different newspapers with uh, the president of Midcoast Hospital, yeah. And some of the board members of the Lung mm -hmm. Association. So, um, you know, the media in Maine has been very supportive of the event, obviously, because they they know it's a good cause and it involves a lot of people. So. Yes, they've been really kind to us. They really have. Yeah. And of course, the media sponsors um, like WGME and Blueberry Broadcasting mm -hmm. and Down East Magazine. Um, they help with, with publicizing yeah. as well. Yeah, and Public Radio, I believe, was a sponsor last year. So it's 
been terrific. So people can ride virtually um, mm -hmm. also by going to the website and signing up. And right. you said they have to raise $400. Mm -hmm. And um, right. how do they raise the money typically? I mean, people, you ask friends, you ask coworkers, you ask family members. Yeah. Um, you put a, uh, you go to your local um, places that, where you do business. Yeah. And you can ask for a donation, your hairdresser or dry cleaner. Uh, but you can also see if they would allow you to put out like a change jar and you put your picture on it and, you know, a little story as to why you're riding or why you're raising the money. Because you can always get people to donate change. I know I don't like carrying a lot of change. Yeah, so right. I'm not to do that. Um, but, you know, you're the the employer you work for can also help you. Either they have matching gifts. Um, you can also raise money um, through United Ways and designate your money to the American Lung Association. Um, and so, you know, I, there was a company in uh, South Portland that I worked with and they had um, pizza on Fridays. So they would sell the slices of pizza after getting it donated and you could wear you know, jeans, whatever, but it was a nice uh, fundraiser for those people. Some women will, uh, I've heard some people are really great um, bakers, so they bring chocolate chip, warm chocolate chip cookies. Oh, that sounds good. To work, and they sell them to employees, you know, in the morning. I mean, who doesn't love the smell of a chocolate chip? Yeah, that sounds right? pretty good right now. The muffins. Um, yeah, so employers are also, I find, um, very supportive of the cause. Yeah, the that's great. So where can people find out more about the trek and how can they connect with you, Gail? They can find out about the trek at our website. It's trekacrossmaine.org. And um, you can also call, um, you can call me. Okay. And uh, if you have pencil and paper, you can yeah. write my phone number down. Uh, but it's 624-0302. Um, we're happy to help. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, which is the Trek Across Maine, and you can just do some outreach to us, and um, we will reply back and get a hold of you. So um, we have different avenues. Well, and also Gail Eau Claire, which is A U C L A I R at lung.org is your email or right. your LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah. So lots of ways of connecting with Gail or with the event. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited. We have how many more months now? We've got about five I more months. We're down to days. Oh, gosh. So we're down to like 145 days or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'll come up quick. It's like when you make, you know, when you go to the dentist and they say, you know, come back in six months and you you feel like it's forever. And then all yeah. of a sudden, here it is, you know. It is. <laughs> I hate to say it, the fast, I mean, the older we get, the faster the time goes. goes by. <laughs> yeah. okay. But Gail, this has been a lot of fun. And I'm so excited about this year's track and especially getting back in person. You know, it's yeah. like, such a too. such a blessing that we don't have to be isolating with COVID anymore. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. So thank you for joining me, and uh, everybody in PR Maven Nation. Thanks you for the good work that you're doing as well. So have a great day, PR Maven Nation. You too. Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.